All right, so um, a few years ago, I, uh, I was a part of this uh, play, and I played the role of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. It was called The Invitation. And uh, what I want to do today is to share with you a little bit of that play, just a little bit of the essence of it. And it begins by Martin receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. And so I'm going to go through that, and then I'm going to transition into a poem, poetry type thing uh, after that. It's okay. Go ahead. Um, so it begins by Martin receiving the, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize, called up, and going to give his acceptance. This morning, I would like to use this lofty and historic platform to discuss what appears to me to be the most pressing problem confronting mankind today. Modern man has brought this whole world to an awe-inspiring threshold of the future as he has reached new and astonishing peaks of scientific success. He has produced machines that think and instruments that peer into the infallible ranges of interstellar space. And their planes and spaceships have dwarfed distance, placed time in chains, and carved highways through the stratosphere. Now, this is a dazzling picture of modern man's scientific and technological progress. Yet, despite these spectacular strides in science and technology, and still unlimited ones to come, well, let's just say that something basic is missing. What I mean is that there seems to be a sort of poverty of the spirit which stands in glaring contrast to our scientific and technological abundance. It appears that the richer we have become materially, the poorer we have become both morally and spiritually. We have learned to fly the air like birds and to swim the seas like fish. But we have yet to learn the simple art of living together as a family. But ladies and gentlemen, with that said, in the words of Dr. King, I have a dream. Yes, I have a dream, and within my dream there are numerous scenes, each unique and composed of a thousand beautiful things. Now, one of the first things that was peculiar about this dream is that it first seemed to first stream in black and white, and then bursting into a flash of light, it morphed into what I would describe as technicolor. I saw vivid visions of every sister and every brother of every color filled with the intention of simply helping others to never suffer. It was as if we had developed this insatiable occupational appetite for service and helping others have become our bread and butter. And as soon as spirit fed us supper in my dream, Men and women begin the balance of restoring the divine feminine in men again. And now with more of our authentic self discovered, I witness once broken men no longer holding in their unprocessed emotions when it's time to take a deep breath, reset, be vulnerable, and share our most authentic self with others. You know, sharing those feelings that are most authentically felt with others. And finally, being inspired by this dream, I woke up with my hopes up, and when I spoke up, I began to get more intimate with people and close up. I began to truly see you and my own self and others, as I began to see through this concept called other. My sisters, my brothers, I have a dream. Yes, I have a dream that one day, collectively worldwide, that we as a world decide to begin to accept, acknowledge, examine, and love 
our fears till they disappear, and our hate as it dissipates, and come to recognize these as assets and aspects of self that simply long to be embraced, and also come to realize that love was already truly his in the first place. See, I've come so far that I'm willing to go so far as to venture to state that any fears or any hate in any case are merely lower forms of love, misjudged, misused, misconstrued, misdirected, or maybe just misplaced mistakes. But anyway, at any rate, when we miss the mark, all it means is that we've missed the heart. And since the living of life is a simplistic heart, all we need to do is trace our way back to the place where forgiveness starts, even in the dark. Four, when it is dark enough, and the only time we may truly see the stars, and the words of Dr. King lie deep, for I have a dream. I have a dream that as a collective team of multidimensional spiritual beings, that we all begin to vibrate at a much higher rate. So when you and I are faced with negativity, we all choose just simply to reply with more love. You see, make no mistake, in the words of Dr. Maya Angelou, love really does liberate, which is great, because I perceive that all negativity in truth is just simply a cry for more love. I have a dream. I have a dream, and this is not to be confused with the American dream. No, this is much more of the Aquarian dream of humanity embarking upon a new age of enlightenment, taking a quantum leap forward aiming our trajectory into the destiny of all things, beginning by going on domestic flight, then soaring to majestic heights while growing at the speed of light, despite the illusion of how things may currently seem. See, I tend to believe that growing through all this stuff only enables us to eventually wake up, raise up, reach up, pick our feet up as we begin to take the aforementioned quantum leap up onto the highest peak of planetary peace, but... First, by taking a brief moment of time to still our outer mind and focus all our attention inside, allowing that vibe of inner peace and well-being to arise. Then, if we so choose, deliberately decide to ascend to the summit of total global oneness, never to ever plummet and together forever, conscious of the fact that we are all partners in this co-created coalition of healers, builders, leaders, teachers, composers, and holders of this ever-evolving vision of the limitless infinite possibilities that humanity is to accomplish. <laughs> and if I only had but one wish, it would be for us to take this day celebrate, and either continue or begin to live our dreams. I have a dream. You have a dream. We all have a dream. Because in a sense, this life is but a dream. Before I go, I'd like to share one, maybe two more things. <laughs> and that would be first, I would urge us all to just imagine. And as Alexa said, to see life through the eyes of God, to see life through the eyes of our own inner mystic, which sees eons, beyond, but most considered to be realistic. And what is number one on my dreams, desires, and wish list is that we all simply live our heart's desires to the moment our hearts expire. And as the master people taught us, we can walk on water once we first walk through fire. Mm -hmm. Thank you.